This prince, who is both deaf and mute, is on the verge of inheriting the throne, but he parades around in his undergarments. Everyone ridicules him, considering him a foolish and unworthy candidate for the throne. His brother challenges him to a public fight. Porgy, despite being weak and frail, has an extraordinary ability to dodge every attack. He effortlessly evades his brother's strikes and even manages to land a few hits of his own, until the master abruptly stops the mash. Using sign language, the master tells Porgy that this kind of swordplay is not fitting for a future king. Porgy feels a bit scared, but he gives up his evasive tactics. David strikes forcefully with his stick. Porgy takes the blow hard, but the difference in their strength is too great. Porgy is struck hard by David, and then another blow follows. He foams at the mouth. Porgy fights with all his might, but he is no match for David. David sees the perfect opportunity for revenge. He beats his brother with numerous blows, knocking Porgy to his knees. However, the master, acting as the referee, refuses to stop the fight, even though David continues to vent his anger. Clark, who has been hiding on the sidelines, can't bear to watch any longer. He is about to rush in and save Porgy when a spear suddenly intervenes, stopping David. It's APIs, one of the four heavenly kings, as declared by the master. David is declared the winner. APIs waves his gun and asks why the master didn't stop him, but the master doesn't offer an explanation. Porgy lies on his bed, badly wounded, dreaming. Everyone laughs at him, considering him a coward who only knows how to dodge, a complete loser. Porgy rolls onto the floor. He tries to lift his sword with the last of his strength, desperately wanting to prove that he is not a coward, but despite his efforts, he can't lift the sword. Porgy cries, feeling despair over his own incompetence. He fears that he may never become a great king. Carker, hiding under the bed, can't bear to witness this. He tells Porgy, you fought a good fight, you should be proud. Porgy sees Carker's smile return, ready to bring him gold and silver once again, but Clark says he doesn't need it anymore. He empathizes with Porgy, seeing his own past reflected in him. It turns out that Clark is a member of the Shadow Clan, who once served King Bo. He had a happy family, but suddenly tragedy struck. The entire clan was hunted down by the king. Clark's mother decided to hold off their pursuers on her own, allowing young Clark to escape. Unfortunately, his mother was captured and killed, but Clark was fortunate enough to encounter a noble girl from the kingdom. She saved Clark's life by disguising him as a ragdoll. However, when he saw his mother impaled on the tip of a sword, he broke down and cried. The kind and resourceful girl covered his cries with her own, allowing Kark to escape. Kark then fled to another kingdom, hungry and desperate. He tried to trade his favorite toy for an apple, but he was rejected. However, he was so famished that he left his toy behind and took the apple. But he was accused of theft and beaten. He encountered a strong man who gave him a plate of fish bones. From that moment on, Kark considered the man his master, but the strong man turned out to be cruel. He made Kark do all sorts of chores and only gave him scraps of food, despite eating plenty of fish and meat himself. The strong man discovered Kark's talents and turned him into a thief. Kark stole a chest full of gold coins, but the strong man only gave him one gold coin. At night, Kark would sleep holding his master's hand, believing that he was loved. Holding his master's hand made him feel safe. However, the strong man was a gambler. When he lost all his money, he saw a wanted notice for Kark and sent his soldiers to capture him for the bounty. Kark managed to escape, the next day, he returned to look for his master, only to be mistaken for a wanted man and kicked out. Kark was filled with sadness, he secretly followed his master to a tavern, where he got into a fight with someone else. As he was dying, stabbed in the heart, no one came to his aid except for Kark, who mourned his master. The strong man finally realized that he had failed Kark and left with tears of remorse. After that, Kirk wandered aimlessly, accustomed to the coldness and cruelty of the world, he transformed from a kind-hearted child into a cold and jaded individual. But it wasn't until he met the kind-hearted Porgy that everything changed. These two individuals, who shared similar fates, found solace in each other. They became each other's support, even if the whole world abandoned Porgy. Kark would remain Porgy's most loyal knight. Porgy sheds tears of emotion.